Uh, you got some interesting mail. From inside Kajarina. That's not unusual. I get notes from prisoners quite regularly. Most of them are crackpot junkies who are in total denial. I, I guess they give you some chemical strengths, huh? Drugs! What did they give you? The communication from David Pye that's all over the newspaper at the moment is a bit different. The guy accused of ordering the murder of Nick Martin wasn't selling a sob story about his innocence. He was writing to let me know he was pissed off about a story I wrote a few months ago about life in jail. What was his problem? He was angry at point number 14, which was about the special handling unit. He thought I was saying he was in the shoe because he couldn't handle himself in the general population, which I wasn't saying because even an idiot journo like me can see that David Pye is a man who can handle himself. So he wanted to correct the record and he made the point that the special handling unit, which he's in because he needs to be isolated for the good order and governance of the prison, is different to the special protection unit, which bent cops and pedophiles are in because if those guys are let out with the others, things like this happen. Just here to stab you if you get too close. Pi said he wanted to be in the general prison population and didn't fear any jail yard revenge attacks for his alleged role in Martin's execution. Your past is a straight up nightmare. He made the interesting point that the guy who admitted pulling the trigger was walking around Casuarina openly bragging about the kill at Perth Motorplex and yet nothing had happened to him. Because despite all the emotion at Nick Martin's funeral, we haven't seen an act of revenge for his death. So maybe people aren't as upset as we first thought. <laughs> Pi says, so why should he be locked up sometimes for more than 23 hours a day for a threat that's not as real as we might think? He even offered to sign a disclaimer so there was no blowback on the Department of Justice if something did happen to him. I very much doubt anyone will have any sympathy. Because he's a bikey. Yeah, well, what do you think? I think a lot of bikies are often hypocritical idiots. They say they're one percenters and don't want to be part of society, but they send their kids to public schools. And when they get shot up or stabbed, they end up in public hospitals. So they've forfeited their right to complain that the deck of cards has been loaded against them. And we have loaded the deck. <laughs> we have abandoned all the usual checks and balances of good public policy when it comes to OMCGs. The dispersal notices and the anti-consorting orders can be applied arbitrarily. F*** all judicial oversight. The insignia laws are historical. Retrospectivity should be applied sparingly in modern law, but that's out the window now. We're politicising the police force in a way I have never seen before. But 90% of West Australians couldn't give a shit about the trampling of long-held notions of what constitutes a basic civil liberty, because when you call yourself an outlaw, you don't get to complain about the law. True. I feel a but coming on, though. But... <laughs> Can we at least agree that a bikey should get a fair trial when he is inevitably arrested and charged? I think that's fair. That we will respect that line in the sand, that we won't allow mob justice to infiltrate the courtroom? Yes. OK. So how on earth does someone like David Pye get a fair trial when his lawyer can see him for an hour at a time to prepare his defence? He's up against the government of Western Australia. The cops and the DPP are working 24-7 to prove he's guilty, as they should. That's their job. But on the other side, you've got one defence lawyer, Paul Holmes, who's limited to seeing his client to an hour at a time because his client is in the shoe. There's loading the deck, and then there's loading the deck. <coughs> the cops had Pi under surveillance for months. They amassed terabytes worth of phone intercepts and communications caught on bugs and secret cameras and they dumped it all on Holmes's desk and they've said to him, you want full disclosure? Suck on this one. They're trying to bury you in paperwork. And then they say, by the way, the most you can spend with your client to work out what's actually true and what's not is 60 minutes. Still, people will say Crimea River. Think about these charges. Pi has been charged with murder, two counts of inciting another to commit murder one count of intent to endanger the life, health or safety of any person, two counts of dealing with property used in connection with an offence. Paul Holmes is no slouch, but to get on top of that in an hour, you'd need to be the greatest lawyer on earth. I'm sure he'll be adequately paid. Quite, and he's about to get a tax break.
Maybe. Anthony Albanese and Jim Chalmers are playing good cop, bad cop on the issue of the so-called Stage 3 tax cuts, which is slated to start in 2024. Chalmers is the bad cop. He's mounting the case that reducing the tax rate so everyone earning between 45 and 200k pays 30 cents in the dollar is unaffordable. The risks of a global recession are intensifying. It'll cost the budget $20 billion when we have a trillion dollars in debt and we might need that $20 billion for other things. The world economy is a dangerous place right now. Uh, the storm clouds are gathering. Like rebuilding the entire northern half of WA when the worst cyclone season in history hits next year. Or rebuilding the entire eastern seaboard when the worst floods in history hit next year also. Albo's playing the good cop. Yes, He's saying the government's position on stage three hasn't changed and they will come into effect in two years as planned. Do you believe him? God, no. Albo's completely full of shit. He's just kicking the can down the road for a while and when the economy really tanks, which it will... Iceberg, right ahead! He'll say he has no choice but to scrap stage three because there's a revenue hole created by a collapse in stamp duty because house prices are falling, a collapse in company tax because businesses are going under and a collapse in royalty income because iron ore and oil and gas are have gone to shit. And in the very unlikely event that those collapses don't eventuate, he'll find another reason anyway, because the Australian Labor Party isn't in the business of giving millionaire families a tax break. Have a look at the suburbs that will benefit most from the cuts in 2024. You reckon the good people of Peppermint Grove and City Beach are doing it so tough they need some relief? The previous government argued that tax breaks at the top end of town are good for the economy because people will spend extra money at restaurants and in the shops. And they will be good for the economy. The economy of the French Riviera. Because the restaurants and shops at which the top end of town will spend its extra money will be in Monte Carlo. This is us. Absolutely. It can be. Great. Make it us. Not the Morley Galleria. I feel like there's a bikey gag to be had here. Just leave it. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.